Hello everyone. Welcome to another edition of Screenwriting Tips. My name is Tony DiGirolamo and today we're talking about how to write a mystery screenplay. Um, mysteries are kind of out of vogue in Hollywood in a lot of ways. If, if, if you're talking about the, the sort of classic narrative that's a mystery. Uh, so there's not a lot of call for them. But um, there, they. If you if you go on the internet and you do a search for, like the greatest mystery movies of all time or the greatest made, mystery movies made in the two thousands, you get a very strange list of movies um, because they're not necessarily movies that are mysteries, right? So what is a mystery? A mystery is a it's a it's a unknown thing that in the plot of the story people want to figure out what it is right it can also be just a big surprise technically um, I don't know if there's really I don't know if you really can call say a lot of horror movies mysteries even though they're surprising I would say that in order to have a mystery movie, you really need a reason to solve the mystery and it has to be a surprise too. Just having the surprise, I don't think is enough to really call it a mystery. And if you look at the list in uh, on, on the internet, the list of mystery movies, you know, and some of the movies are good, like Rear Window. I don't know if Rear Window is really a mystery um, because I guess in a way it is because Jimmy Stewart is trying to figure out whether or not this guy killed his wife based on what he observed. So yeah, I guess I guess in a way it's a mystery movie. It, it, it's it in some ways though I almost think it's kind of not in that since you kind of know the premise of rear window going into it you know if it turned out spoiler alert if it turned out that uh, Raymond Burr hadn't murdered his wife um, was that a real possibility like if you were watching the movie and it turned out oh Raymond Burr didn't murder his wife it was just all a wacky misunderstanding or the wife was out of town and what you know he saw was perfectly normal that wasn't gonna happen and, and that's part of the challenge of writing a mystery. You have to write it in such a way that it feels like life could go on whether or not you solve the mystery. Like to me, um, a great mystery movie is The Usual Suspects. Now, it's not a mystery in the sense that, although in a way it is, there is a cop kind of trying to solve a crime, but really uh, he's not on the trail he thinks he's on the trail of a guy but he's kinda on the wrong trail I guess because he's interviewing Kevin Spacey and you know spoilers uh, it turns out he's not really getting the answers he think, thinks he's getting so you know the, the, the big reveal in the usual suspects the you know it's not like Sherlock Holmes he doesn't solve the mystery at the end it is uh, it's a, a mystery that's only revealed to the audience but but that's you know part of the, the the process of the mystery there's a there's a big reveal at the end and you should be surprised by that revelation um, you know Obviously, if you're watching a Sherlock Holmes movie, you know, people have read the Sherlock Holmes mysteries, so, you know, when you see them in movie form, it's not really a shock unless they change it drastically somehow and, you know, somehow make it better, but that's, that's you know, kind of a tough thing. Um, I would say a movie that, you know, wa was kind of a shock ending and you know at the same time there were there were murders 
uh, it was more of a, a, a misleading movie. I don't know if you'd call it a mystery. Well, I, I wouldn't call it a mystery is my point, uh, is the movie Psycho. Because Psycho has this ending where you find out the real murderer and the, but the whole time you kind of think it's somebody else. So, you know, that on its own is, it's shocking, but is it a mystery? It, it, it kind of like the movie didn't beg you to figure out who was doing all this. It was kind of just happening and it was dealing with the results of those murders and the cover up or whatever you want to call it. I mean, definitely the cops were involved, but you know, it wasn't like cops were looking for the murderer per se kind of thing where you're following the cops. So, but I think what you can learn from a movie like Psycho and, and movies like it is you definitely need in a mystery in order to have that shocking ending, you need a good red herring, right? You need something that is plausibly the answer to the mystery, right? So uh, another movie that ends up on the list and I, I don't think is really a mystery is a much more recent movie, Get Out. Um, it, it, in some ways it's a mystery because the main character doesn't realize what he's getting into and then that's slowly revealed in the movie and then it gets sort of crazier and crazier and then it's about his you know escape from that situation but um, so I guess you you could say it has mystery elements to it. It, it you know it there's a fine line I guess between mysteries and thrillers that kind of seems to go more towards the thriller because the danger is there right it, it's more about the danger he's in after the reveal than it is the reveal. Like if the reveal had come at the very tail end of the movie, that to me would be, like Psycho, that to me would be closer to a mystery, right? Because it's like, oh, I'm trying to put all these pieces together, what's going on here? Ending, this is what's going on. Whereas you put the pieces together and by, I guess, probably midway, through the second act or early in the second act you start to it starts to reveal what's going on it's horror and then uh, uh, you know and it's got elements of horror too because it's very scary uh, what's going on so in the case of a mystery movie in terms of writing it as a as a screenplay you need that element of the red herring being here is another plausible explanation for what's going on. Here is a another world where, you know, instead of, you know, this guy being the murderer, it was this person and therefore life goes on or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, in order to create that world, if the events in the movie can only lead to one series of events, you know, at least in, say, like, Rear Window, you got the sense that if Jimmy Stewart wasn't there, you know, bored, looking out his window, uh, things would have played out differently. There was, there was more to that world. It just so happened he happened to be looking at it in that time period and, and saw what he saw, right? So there's a sense that there's a whole world going on because so much is happening in the other apartments and windows. Whereas sometimes in a movie, if it's not as big or if the world's not as fleshed out, you feel like, it's kind of like playing a video game where you only have one choice. You have a very linear story progression and you can only progress if you do the thing the video game says. Movies can be like that in that, you know, this guy's the murderer. He's the only guy that could be the murderer. You know, it's like when you watch um, Law and Order, right? The problem with Law and Order after a while of watching it, uh, as soon as you saw the name actor who hadn't been on the show before, but who was a guest star, 
you realize, oh, he's the murderer, right? Because you know that the character actor that the police interview early, who's supposed to be the red herring, can't be the murderer. Because in a TV show like that, the guy with all the lines is the star. And that's how it's promoted. So it gives away, it kind of gives away the mystery angle of it. Now, that doesn't mean that the episode itself can't be good, but a lot of times, you know, if the, the characters were like interviewing one guy where they interview the star and then they write him off at first and say, oh, well, he can't be the murderer. And then they go after the other guy. You watch it and you go, well, obviously he's the murderer. Why are you letting him go? He's the biggest star on the show. So that's part of the problem. And it can be a problem in the casting of a feature too, because the same exact thing could happen, right? If someone's going to be a suspect, or if you have say three suspects, and the third suspect is, I don't know, Bruce Willis. <laughs> and the other two guys are like, well, you never heard of them before. Then you're pretty sure that Bruce Willis is the murderer because, you know, he's going to have all the lines because he's the biggest star. But ultimately, that's something you probably can't control as a screenwriter. Um, you can maybe even things out a little bit in terms of the screenplay by giving those red herring characters enough you know screen time that maybe they hire a guy who's almost as big as the killer you know the guy who plays the uh, killer the actor who plays the killer but um, you know ultimately big name actors tend to get more lines they tend to the movie tends to skew that way there's not a whole lot you can do. You know, a good cast casting agent will cast someone who is a good actor, but maybe isn't as well known to the audience, right? So if you look at, you know, again, this isn't really a mystery because you knew who the killer was, but Silence of the Lambs, right? The guy who plays um, Buffalo Bill in Silence of the Lambs He's an actor that's, he's a, he was a character actor, still is, and he's been on shows, and you've seen him, but he wasn't like, you know, the biggest star you've ever seen, right? Like, enough in the business he could be in the role and play the part, but not so much that people would be like, oh, that's the guy, you know, if you had you'd seen him. And they didn't shoot that movie that way. Like, it wasn't about who is Buffalo Bill when you watch that movie, you know who Buffalo Bill is. That really isn't the mystery part of the movie. And it, again, it's not really a mystery. But that's another movie that got on the list. I was like looking at the list before I was doing the videos, thinking, oh, let me remind myself of mystery movies. Um, so really, in, in, in today's you know, movie industry, mysteries aren't a big thing right now. Uh, you know, the movie industry just, you know, mystery is a great element. You can have it in comedy and horror and just about anything because that surprise is really something that's in all screenplays, right? You're always going to have revelations that are surprising. Whether it's a comedy or a drama, you know, you want it to be you know, the surprise gets people's attention, like, oh, aha. Um, but whether or not you're following it is another story. I guess that's where the mystery part of the genre comes in. If it's a, a story in which a character is trying to get to that reveal, then it's a mystery. If not, then it just has elements of mystery. And, um, I think when you're writing stories uh, about mysteries, the big thing you also have to remember is the revelation of the mystery is the big payoff. You can't make anything else bigger than that. If you do, uh, you're in trouble. You also can't promise you know, I think a lot of times uh, 
movies sometimes promise too much. They, they, they promise this big, huge ending. Uh, I'll give you an example in the world of comics that, that uh, uh, and this was many years ago, DC Comics was doing a, uh, wasn't really a mystery, but it was a big reveal story. It was called uh, Armageddon 2001, something like that, or Armageddon in 2000. And initially, the big reveal was either leaked or figured out by the fan base because of the way you know comics come out. They come out three months ahead of time in the catalog and word leaked out ahead of time about who the who the hero that turns into the bad guy is. And in a, in a desperate attempt to make it a surprise, um, and this is what I heard, I don't know if it's totally factual, but the word is that DC Comics went back and picked a different character to become evil and sort of reworked the story. And it kind of, it kind of didn't make as much sense as the guy they originally picked. The guy they originally picked, the story seemed to be heading towards that. And that would have made sense. Now in some, in some ways they kind of pigeonholed themselves into that. So when they went off, it, 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 it kind of almost made it worse. It was like him? Him the whole time? That the what? So you have to be it's it's very tough to write a mystery. It has to be smart, it has to be surprising, it has to make sense, and it has to have, you know, all those elements that you know, all the research and science have to all come in, you know, to who killed who for what reason and how and you know. And, and part of the problem too is just about every mystery has been done, right? I mean, they've been doing these mystery novels and stories for years. So in, in some respects, it's all kind of tapped out. You know, when, you, when you've when you read a bunch of mysteries, uh, it becomes like, well, you know somebody's the murderer, right? You know, somehow this guy got killed. It had to be one of these characters. So. You know, it's, it gets harder and harder to surprise audiences uh, when you're writing a mystery. You know, it, it's just it's just very difficult. And uh, but if you have a lot of plausible red herrings in a world that that's functional, you can pull it off. You can pull it off. I mean, the interesting thing with the movie like Silence of the Lambs, it wasn't the mystery about who Buffalo Bill was, but kind of like how they were going to find him and uh, you know who was going to capture him and and then of course the big twist at the end with Hannibal at the end so you know you can also over twist and turn that's a problem with movies too if you if you put in too many twists and turns you 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 kind of numb the audience to it. it it's just like an action movie if there's too much action any anything that's too much you know will numb the audience to the effect so the great thing about a movie like silence of the lambs it builds up to that last portion with hannibal and that build is is exciting in the movie and they also make it it doesn't feel like when you first watch it it doesn't feel like that's gonna happen. You don't know that's gonna happen. At least I didn't when I watched the movie. You kind of think, well, maybe this is over. That's another good way. You know, you gotta create a sense of, ah, the movie's over for that red herring to work. You know, this is the guy and now the movie's over. And that's really tough to do, right? Because you want the movie to be about 90 to 100 minutes. So that red herring has to time out right around the 80, 85 minute mark. So it looks like, oh, this movie's wrapping up. And then it can't go on too long after that, right? Because you got to get in under 100, really. I mean, you can go a little longer. Um, I think Seven's a good, a good example of a mystery movie. You know, it it's not so much about the identity of John Doe, but John Doe's plan to be revealed. 
and how that plan eventually, you know, unfolds to make the ending what it is. What's in the box? Um, so, you know, it's, uh, it, it, and it's in some respects you watch that movie you kind of know it's coming you know but not until you reach that important moment right that I think that's about when it happens right about the 80 85 minute mark is when the box appears and then we know right then Kevin Spacey starts doing his Thing and it's like, oh, wait a minute, what happened here? So it's not, you know, uh, uh, it wasn't like they caught John Doe in this big chase, you know, and, and uh, uh, caught him with evidence of what was about to unfold. That was revealed at that moment for the maximum impact. So that's another technique too. It's about how you reveal the imp so the impact is maximized. And um, I think too you need characters that can realistically um, react the way you want to. You know? So Brad Pitt's character in Seven had to be a certain kind of character. He had to be a little more emotional. You know? And whereas Morgan Freeman's character was more controlled and older, but he kind of only barely has a handle on his partner. And he knows it. And you can see that in the movie. It's like he's trying to rein him in, trying to teach him good policing. And, uh, you know, but by the end, it's like, oh, you know, he, he thought he had him under control. And then, like, uh oh. Um, so anyhow, uh, as always, when you're writing any screenplay, do your research. The three act structure works pretty solid for a mystery. Uh, you know, act one's the setup, the characters, uh, what the mystery is. Act two is going to be, you know, the characters trying to solve the mystery and more elements and red herrings. The third act is where it gets complicated because that's when you need your probably your red herring reveal and then closely followed by the actual reveal and then the movie's got to almost immediately end after that um, some people say the uh, the girl with the dragon tattoo movies like those are mysteries and I guess they are in their own way yeah I would say that too um, and they com they combine a, a bit bit of action. Um, I don't know if it's like totally surprising who the killers are in that movie, but to some degree it is. You know, it, it, and again, you know, this is a genre that's been beaten to death over the years, so it's hard. It's hard to do a big movie with a lot of suspects and a cop trying to figure it out. Like it it does. It's it's hard to make people want to see that now. Um, it, it's you know it's not the genre back in the 70s it was big like it was all cop shows and mysteries and now it's just you know that that's not people don't have the patience for it I think you know you need an audience who's willing to sit through all the all the wind up to get that sweet payoff and it's really tough to do you know I think it's Silence of the Lambs which again not really a mystery per se but there's lots to 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 hang on hang your hat on in terms of enjoying the movie another one they listed was north by northwest which yeah yeah that's a movie uh, that's a mystery movie um because the mystery is who is george kaplan now at a certain point um you know they find out who george kaplan is and then it it's revealed to be something much bigger than just him, but, um, you know, it's, I, I guess that is a mystery too. It's kind of like half mystery and half 
like a guy caught up in in events, you know, kind of half fish out of water almost. Because Cary Grant, you know, at first is trying to figure out who this guy is, and then by the time he gets the story, he's kind of in too deep to get out. And then he has to, uh, uh, you know, he, he falls his way in, but then has to sort of fight his way out in order to save the day at the end. Uh, great movie, by the way. One of my favorites, North by Northwest. If you haven't seen it, that and Psycho, um, you really ought to go see them before somebody tells you the endings. Um, you know, those, to me, especially Psycho, if you haven't seen, I mean, the first time you see Psycho, it's, it's quite good, you know, after, after you've seen it, you've seen it, but, uh, and don't see the color one, see the black and white one, see the classics, you know, I'm sure the remake is well made and everything, but, uh, nothing beats the original, nothing beats it. All right, that's it for Mysteries on Screenwriting Tips. My name is Tony DiDramo. Uh, like, subscribe, say hello, uh, say, Say something, and I'll see you next time.